السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنما المؤمنون إخوة فأصلحوا بين أخويكم وقال جل وعلا لقد كان لكم في رسول الله أسوة حسنة صدق الله العلي العظيم إن الله ملاك تهم يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما صلى الله على النبي الأمي وآله صلى الله عليه وسلم صلاة وسلاما عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جعلته سهلا وأنت يا حي يا قيوم تجعل الحزن إذا شئت سهلا اللهم يا كريم أكرمنا بنور الفهم وأخرجنا من ظلمات الوهم ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم Just to continue with the ahadith in relation to strengthening the fabric of society by strengthening people's hearts and bringing them together in peace and harmony and love we shall inshallah delve into further ahadith, prophetic traditions related to this topic from this beautiful kitab Al-Adab Al-Mufarad by Imam Muhammad ibn Ismail Al-Bukhari Rahimahullah Rahmatan Wasi'ah in the hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rids our heart of rancor and enmity and hasad and hiqd and fills it with his love and mercy which exudes to the entire creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to friend and foe alike so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates mercy and love not only within ourselves but love and mercy which then extends to the family which then extends to society which then extends to the entire country and then inshallah azza wa the entire globe all throughout the entire world we shall see peace we shall see harmony we shall see love and affection inshallah azza wa so just to continue bismillah rahman rahim babu man hajara akhahu sanatan apne bhai se ek saal tak qate ta'alluq karna حدثنا عبد الله بن يزيد قال حدثنا حيوة قال حدثنا أبو عثمان الوليد بن أبي الوليد المدني أن عمران بن أبي أنس حدثه عن أبي خراش أنا أبي خراش الأسلمي رضي الله تعالى عنه وأهن مجمعين أنه سمع رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول من هجر أخاه سنة فهو كسفك دمه حضرت ابو خراش السلمی رضی الاسلمی رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ بیان فرماتے ہیں کہ میں نے رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کو یہ فرماتے ہوئے سنا کہ جس شخص نے اپنے بھائی کو ایک سال تک چھوڑے رکھا یعنی اس سے قاطع تعلق کیا تو گویا اس نے اس کا خون ہی کر دیا یعنی اس کو ناحق قتل کر دیا اللہ اکبر سیدنا ابو خراش رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ سیز I heard the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say Whoever disassociates himself from his brother Severs all ties with his brother Doesn't even speak to him This doesn't just refer to the blood brother This also refers to the brothers in Islam So whoever does not speak to him Severs all ties of kinship with his brother Then it is akin to him murdering his brother It is as though he's killed him unjustly so murdering is, does not just entail shedding the blood of your innocent brother, it also entails you separating yourself from him. Or a sister separating herself from another sister for no, world, for no reason whatsoever, for worldly reasons, for no valid legal reason. If someone separates himself from his brother, doesn't speak to him, disassociates himself from him, casts suspicion over everything he does, then it is as though he has killed him if he does it for a year. Allahu Akbar. حدثنا ابن أبي مريم قال أخبرنا يحيى بن أيوب قال حدثني الوليد بن أبي الوليد المدني أن عمران بن أبي أنس حدثه أن رجلا من أسلم من أصحاب النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم حدثه عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال هجر المؤمن سنة كدمه وفي المجلس محمد بن المنكدر وعبد الله بن أبي عتاب فقال قد سمعنا هذا عن 
حضرت عمران ابن انس رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ بیان فرمایا کہ نبی کریم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کے اصحاب میں سے ایک آدمی نے بیان فرمایا جو قبیلہ بنی اسلم سے تھے جو گزشتہ روایت تھی اس میں ان کا نام تھا ابو خراش الاسلمی تو ہو سکتا ہے وہی راوی ہو وہ فرماتے ہیں کہ نبی کریم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم نے ارشاد فرمایا کہ کسی مومن سے ایک سال تک قطع تعلق کرنا اس کے ناحق خون بہا دینے کی طرح ہے یعنی گویا کہ آدمی نے اس کو ناحق قتل ہی کر دیا ہو اسی مجلس میں جس میں یہ روایت بیان کی جا رہی تھی امام محمد ابن المنقدر اور عبداللہ ابن ابی عطا بھی موجود تھے رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہما انہوں نے کہا کہ ہم نے بھی یہ بات اپنے استاذ سے سنی تھی سو اگین سمل حدیث از وی رائٹ بفور اینی ون ہو سیپریٹس ہم سیلف فرام از بردر فار اے ایئر از اکن ٹو ایٹ از از دو ہی ہیز کھیلڈ ہم ان جسٹلی And obviously from the previous narrations we also understand that you are not allowed to disassociate yourself from your brother for any world reason, for any worldly conflict, disagreement for more than three days. Teen din ya teen raaton se zyada aap apne bhai se dur nahi reh sakte. Yani qat-e ta'aluk nahi rakh sakte. Agar dunyavi wajah se ranjish ho kisi zati muamle mein, to teen din se teen din se zyada aap us se qat-e ta'aluk nahi kar sakte. This is the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. باب المحتجرين قد تعلق والك يا عمل كرين حدثنا إسماعيل قال حدثني مالك عن ابن شهاب عن طاء ابن يزيد الليثي عن أبي أيوب الأنصاري أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم قال لا يحل لمسلم أن يهجر أخاه فوق ثلاثة أيام يلتقيان فيعرض هذا ويعرض هذا وخيرهما الذي يبدأ بالسلام as you mentioned before أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم سیدنا ابو ایوب الانصاری رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ سے روایت ہے کہ رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم نے اشارت فرمایا کہ کسی مسلمان کے لئے حالہ نہیں کہ اپنے بھائی کو تین دن سے زیادہ چھوڑے رکھے دونوں اس حال میں ملاقات کرتے ہیں کہ یہ اس سے اعراض کرتا ہے اس سے مو پھرتا ہے اور وہ اس سے اور ان دونوں میں بہتر وہ ہے جو سلام کرنے میں پہل کرے سب سے پہلے جو سلام کرے وہ ان دونوں میں سب سے بہتر ہے نبی کریم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم سیز It is not permissible for a Muslim to leave his brother for more than three days. Such uh, dissociation, such separation is between them that when they meet, this person turns his face away from the other brother, and when this person meets, he turns his face away. This, this is not the state of Muslims. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, the best of both of them is the one who supersedes the other, is the one who is the first to convey the greetings of peace. I mentioned to you last week because when there is rancor between two people, the Satan and the Nafs, they're the winners. <clears throat> because the, the Satan whispers, in, in, insinuates evil into the Nafs and makes your Nafs big, makes you egoistic and says, why should I do salam to him? Why should I go and humble myself and shake hands with him? He should come to me. So the ego takes the good of you and obviously this separation continues to the extent that when both meet, coincidentally meet, then this person turns his face away and the, and the other per person turns their face away. This is not the way Muslims should act. al mu'minu hayyinun Layyinun, a believer is humble, a believer is someone who is down to earth, a believer is someone who reconciliates uh, like a huge building, a structure that each part, each brick supports the other. Now as I mentioned to you in Jumu'ah, if we do not make this manifest in our society right now, with the immediate people that we are in contact with, then how do we expect the situation of our Muslim brothers elsewhere, namely in Syria or Yemen or Palestine, to be resolved or the calamities to be alleviated from them and peace and mercy to envelop them when we ourselves are not exuding this mercy to our immediate family members, to our immediate friends, etc. Okay, so the change starts from us, from ourselves. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Haddathana musaddadun qal. حدثنا عبد الوارث عن يزيد عن معاذة أنها سمعت هشام بن عامر أنها قالت سمعت هشام بن عامر يقول 
سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم يقول لا يحل لمسلم يصار مسلما فوق ثلاث ليال فإنهما ما صارما فوق ثلاث ليال فإنهما ناكبان عن الحق ما دام على صرامهما وإن أولهما فيئا يكون كثارة له سبقه بالفيء وإن وإنهما مات على صرامها لم أو على صرامهما لم يدخل الجنة جميعا أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم سيدنا هشام بن عامر رضي الله تبارك وتعالى فرماته كما أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم كي فرماته هو السنة कि किसी मुसलमान की के लिए हलाल नहीं कि वो किसी मुसलमान को तीन रात से ज़्यादा छोड़े रखे यानी उसे तर्क तल्लुक करे यानी इस ज़माने में देखें आप कितनी सहूलियात होने के बावजूद हम कितने दूर हैं पहले ज़माने में ख़त किताब ख़त किताबत के साथ बातचीत होती थी बहुत दूर दराज से आप अपने वालदे को ख़त लिखते थे वो आपको ख़त लिखते थे दो तीन हफ्ते के बाद ख़त मिलता था लेकिन फिर भी मोहब्बत की थी माशा Yani, but times have completely changed. Yani, you have access to a phone and you can dial it, but again, the ego, the nafs, it says, why should I ring him? Why should I ring that person? Why should I connect with, with him? Obviously, gossiping and backbiting and slandering and calumny, this all happens. But in terms of sharing love and affection and compassion, it's become scarce. This is one of the signs of Qiyamah. That people will come into the mosques They will stand together as though they're united, but their hearts, their hearts will be disunited. This is the hadith of Kamaqal sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Our hearts are disunited because of something minor that happens. We don't forgive the other person. The hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam: two friends, they unite in the bond of friendship. They initiate that bond of friendship. And then, as soon as one person commits an error, the other person leaves that person. The Prophet ﷺ said, "This should not be how friendship is. You should forgive, forgo the other person. Okay, overlook their mistakes so that your mistakes are also overlooked." Or Nabi Karim ﷺ also affirmed, "Or if both of them have three nights more than one other, then they are both entitled to leave the other one alone." If both of them exceed three days and three nights in separation, in disunity, in discord, in disagreement, in disassociation from one another, then they are those who have averted from the truth. They have swayed away from the straight path of Sirat al Mustaqim. So as long as they remain in that state, or on message, who sub se pehle hak ki taraf lautega, yani taluk jordne me pehle karega, to jo kuch ab tak uski taraf se hua, uska kafara ho jayega. Or agar dono usi tar ke taluk ki halat me mar gaye, to dono me se koi bhi jannat me daakhil nahi hoga. And then the Prophet also mentions the one who takes the effort to go to the other person and to do salam. And to make peace, and to reconciliate the matter, and to set aside the differences, and to humble himself, he will have the greatest reward. And if they die in a state that both did not reconciliate the matter between themselves, they had discord between themselves, and they died in that state, none of them shall enter Jannah. None of them shall enter Paradise. Allahu Akbar. So, how grave a consequence is for those people who. Uh, harbor this rank animosity for no reason whatsoever. Any, uh, the only person who is going to fail, the only person who is going to suffer is the person himself who is harboring suspicious doubts and enmity and rank for his Muslim brother. The only person who is going to suffer is that person himself or herself. Which brings me to this next hadith in, in the chapter of Shahana. Apas ki dushmani ka wabal. The the the, the uh, consequence of رانكا حدثنا محمد بن سلام قال حدثنا عبدة قال حدثنا محمد بن عمر قال حدثنا أبو سلمة عن أبي هريرة رضي الله تعالى عنه وعن مجمعين قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم لا تباغضوا ولا تحاسدوا وكونوا عباد الله إخوانا سمعنا حديث as we had narrated before as we had cited before سيدنا أبو هريرة رضي الله تعالى عنه سري واتك رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إشارة فرمايا آپس میں بغض نہ رکھو اور آپس میں حسد نہ کرو اور اللہ کے بندے بھائی بھائی بن کر رہو do not Harbor enmity for one another. Do not be jealous of one another. Why are we jealous of one another? The, the, Imam Al Ghazali mentions a beautiful thing, the, the thing that will stop people from having jealousy. 
what you need to understand is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who is the distributor of sustenance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-razaq wa dhul quwwatil mateen. Inna Allah huwa al-razaq wa dhul quwwatil mateen. It is only Allah who distributes wealth, affluence, or indigence, honor, or humiliation. All of that lies under the control of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is His decree. He has ordained it. He has destined it. It is under His command. It is under His rule. So if we have jealousy against another person, say for example, I mentioned it to you this before, you are putting the same number of hours in work. You work 20 hours, uh, you work 40 hours a week. The other person works 40 hours a week. You earn 200 pounds, the other person earns 400 pounds. This is decree. What is this? Taqdeer. Okay? It's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rizq is from Allah. It's not from you. So when a person has jealousy uh, for another person or against another person, it is as though it's, it's like an implication that he's saying, Oh Allah, I'm not happy, astaghfirullah, with your decree, with your share of wealth that you have given to that person. Oh Allah, I'm not happy with how you have given such a great amount of money to this person, whereas I'm putting the same amount of effort in and I'm just yielding uh, limited profit. So in, in essence we are questioning the decree, the taqdeer of Allah, the divine decree. And you know the great consequences of those people who question the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? So we should be pleased. Ar ridha bil qada is the essence of taqwa. To be happy with what Allah has given you, Allah will give barakah. Because remember the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a man continuously is in greed of more and more and more. If he has acquired one valley, one valley of gold, and he won't even have enough time in life to spend that, that gold, he will still want more. He will still acquire the second. And when he acquires the second, he will huff and pant and sweat like a dog in order to acquire the third valley. When he attains that, he wants more and more and more. And at the end, the Prophet said, nothing will satiate him except for the earth, the soil, within which he shall be buried. So why live a life of chasing behind money, tiring ourselves mentally, physically, psychologically, and then unleashing our anger and our frustration on the family, you know, people who should be close to you, you should be spending quality time with them. We're not doing that because we're concerned about the dunya. Wail, the, the, the lowest pits of the hellfire for the one who goes slandering people, backbiting, the one who, who amasses wealth and then keeps on counting it. And he gets money and keeps on, keeps a track of how much he's got. Doesn't spend it in the way of Allah, is, acts miserly. You know, this is not the way of a Muslim. And then the Prophet Sassam mentioned, remain as brothers, remain all as the servants of Allah, brothers to one another. <laughs> حدثنا محمد قال حدثنا عمرو بن حفص قال حدثنا الأعمش قال حدثنا بصالح عن أبي هريرة رضي الله تعالى عنه وعن مجمعين عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال حدث قال تجد من شر الناس يوم القيامة عند الله ذا الوجهين الذي يأتي هؤلاء بوجه وهؤلاء بوجه سيدنا أبو هريرة رضي الله تعالى عنه رواية هيك النبي الكريم صلى الله عليه وسلم شاد فرمايا كتم قيامة كدين الله كيا سب سے برے حال میں اس آدمی کو پاؤ گے جو دو چہروں والا ہے جو ان کے پاس جاتا ہے تو اس کا رخ اور ہوتا ہے اور ان کے پاس جاتا ہے تو اس کا رخ اور ہوتا ہے The worst of all kinds of people in the sight of Allah on the day of resurrection will be the two-faced Literally the two-faced When he meets this group of people he has a different persona he has, he has a different personality He's, Subhanallah smiles but when he leaves them and he joins the other group, whoever it may be, or joins the other person, he goes against the other person. He stabs the person behind the back. So someone who has two face, the Prophet ﷺ said in one hadith as narrated uh, on the authority of Sayyidina Ammar ibn Yasir radiallahu ta'ala anke Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam farmaya, dunya mein jo shakhs do rukha hoga, do rukha, do chehre wala. Qayamat ke din uske muh mein a ki do zubane hongi. The one who's two-faced in this world will have two, two tongues of fire on the day of resurrection. 
So be be one. Be yourself. Don't pretend. Okay, this the worst thing is to pretend and to fake a smile before person and then you stab them behind the back. Be good at heart. Be nice with other people. You know, be cheerful. And love for your brother what you love for your own self. The Prophet said, La yuminu ahadukum hatta yuhibba li akhihi ma yuhibbu li nafsi. Tum me se us waqt bhi koi kamil momin nahi ho sakta jab tak ki wo apne bhai ke liye wohi cheez pasand na kare jo khud apne liye pasand karta hai. Tum to pasand karte ho ki tumhari koi burai na kare, koi ghibad na kare. Tum se jo mile to garam joshi ke saath mile, muskurata hua mile. To tum kyu uske saath aisa rawai ikhtar karte ho? Okay, so this is the hadith of the Messenger of Allah, the final couple of the hadith, inshaAllah. Haddathana Abdullah ibn Muhammad ibn Qal, Haddathana Abdul Razzaq ibn Akhbarana ma'amarun an hamamin, aw an humamin, an abi hurayrata qal, qal rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, iyyakum wa dhanna fa inna dhanna akthabu al-hadith, wa la tanajasyu, wa la tahasadu, wa la tabaghadu, wa la tanafasu, wa la tadabaru, wa kunu ibadallahi ikhwana. Hazrat Abu Hurayr radiallahu ta'ala sri wa ta'ala ke rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ishaat firmaya ki tum badgumani se bacho, this is the waba, this is a disease. Sus- yani harboring suspicion on other people. Why didn't you come to my house? Why didn't you attend my wedding? Why didn't you... Why do you give them a good reason? Perhaps he had something more important. Perhaps there was an emergency situation which arise and he had to attend to it. Perhaps he had some other important tasks. Perhaps he didn't like your wedding cake. Whatever. Uh, whatever, yani just give them the bod mark, yani the benefit of the doubt. So this is this is something that we need to actually uh, inculcate within ourselves. Having a good suspicion, having a, a good uh, reason for, for other people. Giving a good reason for other people. We make reasons for ourselves, we make even false excuses uh, to excuse ourselves. Why can't we do the same uh, for other people? But gumani se bacho bila shuba, but gumani sab se zyada juti baat hai. Verily suspicion is the falsest of all talk. Falsest of all things. Sab se juti baat bad gumani hai. Lekin aadmi ke din mein jab bad gumani ki beej bo di jati hai, to phir wo uske, jo dousra shaks hai, uske har har fail pe, ye kahe ga ki ye bad niyeti ki wajah se kar raha hai, bad gumani kare ga. Har har fail ke oopar bad gumani kare ga. Ki usne is tarah ye kiya, is liye ki ye karta hai. Yani we draw the conclusions. Jaysay ki aisa lagta hai ki hum sahib kash buzurg hai, और हमने बस सुन उसके दिल को निकाल के पूरा देख लिया है। And we should understand this that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned that we should completely refrain from uh, harboring evil suspicion uh, or, or being suspicious of your brother. Always give them uh, the benefit of the doubt. Always give a good reasoning to uh, their actions. Inshallah Azza wa Jal. Okay. اور ایک دوسرے کو دھوکہ مت دو اور آپس میں حسد نہ کرو اور آپس میں بغض نہ کرو نہ رکھو اور دنیا کی حاصل کرنے میں بڑھ چڑھ کے مقابلہ نہ کرو جس سے ایک دوسرے کو تکلیف پہنچے اور ایک دوسرے سے پیٹ نہ پھیرو اور اللہ کے بندے بھائی بھائی بن کر رہو the prophet says and then continues saying do not deceive one another do not harbor jealousy to one another do not harbor enmity against one another and in acquiring and amassing uh, this uh, inferior world and worldly possessions do not uh, compete with one another in such a manner that it hurts the other person do not compete with one another in terms of dunya possessions your competition should be the akhirah as the prophet sallallahu alaihi emphasized over and over again the sahaba became true manifestations of this their competition was what Com- outstripping the other superseding the other in terms of good deeds. I t- mentioned to you one narration, uh, the Fuqara al-Muhajireen, the, uh, the indigent from the Muhajireen, they came to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they said, our rich brothers from the Ansar, they have, uh, or from, from the Sahaba, from the uh, other brothers, they have, um, f- they are the foreigners, they have outstripped us in terms of good deeds. They have superseded us. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi asked how? The fuqara, the indigent said, Sahaba, Ya Rasulullah, we pray namaz, they pray namaz, we keep fasts, they keep fasts. 
But they give charity, we can't give charity because we've not got money. They free and emancipate, emancipate slaves for the sake of Allah, we can't do that because we are financially very poor, very weak. The Prophet said, shall not inform you of something that if you do, you shall supersede them, subhanAllah. They said, yes, bala, ya Rasul, of course, your message, tell us something that we will uh, supersede them. And the Prophet said, after every prayer, reset Subhanallah 33 times, Alhamdulillah 33 times, Allahu Akbar 33, or in one narration, 34 times. That's which we know as Tasbih Fatima. Recite this, and you will uh, supersede your brothers, except for the one who does what you do. So then, after a week or so, they came back again. They, they, after, after they left that garden, they were immensely happy. And they came uh, one week after uh, in a very despondent state again. And the Prophet asked, What's happened? The Fuqara and Muhajin, they said, Ya Rasulullah, our rich brothers, they already heard what, we, what you had told us, and they're also doing the same. And he wanted to have a competition, but they're doing the same as well. So the Prophet then said, That is the grace of Allah, He gives it to whoever He wants. So this was the competition that was amongst the companions of Radiallahu Ta'ala and Majma'een. Nonetheless, um, final hadith, insha'Allah Azza wa Jal. الله أكبر حدثني إسماعيل قال حدثني مالك عن سهل عن أبيه عن أبي هريرة رضي الله تعالى عنه أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم قال تفتح أبواب الجنة يوم الاثنين ويوم الخميس فيغفر لكل عبد لا يشرك بالله شيئا إلا رجل كانت بينه وبين أخي شحناء فيقال انظروا أو انظروا هذين حتى يصلحا حضرة أبو هريرة رضي الله تعالى عنه سے روایت ہے کہ رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم نے شاد فرمایا جنت کے دروازے پیر اور جمعرات کے دن کھولے جاتے ہیں تو ہر اس بندے کی بخشش کر دی جاتی ہے جو اللہ کے ساتھ شرک نہیں کرتا ہو مگر وہ شخص کہ اس کے اور اس کے بھائی کے درمیان دشمنی ہو رنجش ہو پس اس کے بارے میں حکم دیا جاتا ہے کہ ان دونوں کو محلت دے دو یہاں تک کہ آپس میں صلح کر لے انہیں بخش نہ دو ابھی انہیں محلت دو یہاں تک کہ وہ آپس میں صلح کر لے پھر دیکھا جائے گا کہ ان کی معافی کی جائے گی کہ نہیں ایک اور روایت میں امام منظری رحمۃ اللہ ترغیب و ترغیب میں اور امام طبرانی نے المعجم الاوسط میں اس روایت کو نقل فرمایا کہ ہر دو شنبے اور پنجشنبے کو یعنی منڈے اینڈ تھرسڈے کو لوگوں کے اعمال اللہ تعالیٰ کی بارگاہ میں پیش کیے جاتے ہیں تو جس نے اللہ تعالیٰ سے بخشش اور معافی مانگی ہوتی ہے اس کو معافی دی جاتی ہے اور جس نے توبہ کی ہوتی ہے اس کی توبہ قبول کی جاتی ہے لیکن باہم کینہ رکھنے والوں حسد رکھنے والوں بکس رکھنے والوں کے اعمال ان کے کینے کے سبب لوٹا دیے جاتے ہیں یعنی ان کی معافی اور توبہ کی قبول کا فیصلہ نہیں کیا جاتا جب تک کہ وہ اس سے باز نہ آ جائے اللہ تعالی ہم سب کو ہماری دلوں کو صاف رکھنے کی توفیق عطا فرمائے ہم سب کو شیر و شکر رہنے کی توفیق عطا فرمائے نبی کریم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کی احادیث مبارکہ پر ہم سب کو عمل کرنے کی توفیق عطا فرمائے آمین